So, hi there investors and uh, welcome to another episode. Really lucky today um, that we've actually got Mazinge. Did I say it right? <laughs> no. No? Go on, tell me. It's Muzingaye. Muzingaye, okay. Um, or Muzi for sure. Muzi yeah. for sure. Okay, yeah. that helps me a little bit. So, we've got Muzi um, with us today. We're going to be talking a little bit um, about Amini. Am 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 Amini? Imani, yeah. Imani, Imani property. property investors. Yeah. Perfect. So, Muzi's um, a property sourcer um, and has got loads of sort of streams going on, etc. So, I just wanted to have a chat with him today for your benefit. Um, so we can see what questions to ask a sourcer, what it is that Muzzy and his, his company is actually up to, um, to see if we can get some information so we know what it is that we're looking for when we're talking to sourcers who are approaching us or when we're going out for them. Yeah. So first of all then Muzzy, could you just sort of give us a bit of a, a round overview of what it is that you guys do, what your company looks like and, and what you're involved in? Yeah, uh, so Imani Property Investors was started in, in January 2019. Yeah, um, we started off as a, a sourcing company, getting tiny buy to lets here, there, here and there, uh, selling on to investors, selling on to people that are starting up in properties, selling on to people that already have massive, massive portfolios. Um, myself, I did a lot of um, networking, did a lot of networking up and down the country essentially, getting to know a lot more people that are doing the same thing. And what we figured is was better for us to work together instead of me actually sourcing on to different investors in a different part of the country where I had to travel up and down. I started working with other people and helping each other. So we now actually source all over the country as a team. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And that's all one, under one brand name. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got, uh, we, we call it a, a property entrepreneurs network. But within that, I've just got in my property investors. So I own Imani Property Investors as a director and if you come and deal with myself, you'll be dealing with myself. However, for properties that are outside my area, you deal with me, but I source it through other investors that I work with. Interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. good stuff. So if we if we sort of talked about um, if, if I as an investor was dealing with you directly. Yeah. Um, what could I, I expect from the from the sort of service um, of working with yourself or with your company? Yeah, so what we tend to do is get to understand a bit about yourself. Yeah, uh, we, we, we class it as a, a, a property problem. What exactly are you looking for? What actually drives you? What is the most important thing for you in terms of getting a property? Are you just looking for a property to own? Are you focusing more on the returns? Are you focusing on a certain location? Get to understand what you're looking for and then we just literally look, go looking for exactly what you've asked for. So it's more about what you want as an investor or what you as investors are looking for. And we get bespoke deals just for that. Sure, okay. So um, one hot topic question that always kind of comes up is, should I, should I be paying a sourcer before I've seen a property? Am I, am I gonna see um, emails dropping into my inbox with a fee on it and then pay within five, 10 minutes else the deal's gonna go? How, how does it work with you sort of presenting the deals to the investors that it is you're working with? Yeah, um, to be honest with you, this is uh, an interesting topic that we talk about all the time. So as you can imagine, you've had this question quite a few times. It's, it's more dependent on how uh, we've come across. So for myself, if I met you and you specifically want to work with me, you tell me exactly what you're looking for. I go away, find it, and then I come and show you what it is that you've asked for. Ask you, does this tick your boxes? Is this something that you're looking for? I wouldn't expect you to just pay straight away. Yeah, I wouldn't expect you to put your money forward and actually we will go through the whole process. You will come and view it if you want to come and view it, go through it, make sure everything is fine. Until you think, do you know what, that is what I want, that's when we can start talking payment. Whereas, if you go through my website, you go through the questionnaire and say, this is what I'm looking for. There's people that are in my database that I haven't met yet. I would love to meet everyone, to be honest with you, but there's people in my database that I haven't met yet. And until I meet you and speak to you and get to understand what you're looking for, there's deals that go out every week. Sure. If okay. there's something that you're actually looking for, because there's high demand and there's loads of people in that database that are looking for certain deals, for those deals, you can put money forward to reserve it. Okay. And then we can start speaking a bit more detail about exactly what you're looking for and why it is that you want that. So we can make sure we are going for the right thing. The last thing we want as sources is you go for a deal that looks okay. And then halfway through it, you think, no, actually that doesn't work for me. 
because that's bad for you, it becomes bad for us, it ruins our relationship. My relationship with my investors or any person that I'm working with is more valuable than the money that comes out of the day. Sure. So we just always try to make sure we tick your boxes, get to understand what you're looking for. Okay. Yeah. So as let's say I'm completely new to property, mm-hmm. um, we've had a bit of a chat, etc. And I explain my needs. I'm, I want whatever property is with whatever specifications, etc. There would be an option for me to kind of almost take the baby steps of, of you presenting me the deal, show me the photos of the yeah. actual property, um, me being able to go around and view it and yeah. make that decision before I'm sort of almost, you know, my hand goes behind my back before mm-hmm. money comes across and then I get a little bit worried that maybe I won't get it back if anything goes wrong, etc. Because that's that's the kind of gist that we're hearing. Um, yeah. or, 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 you know, me representing the new investor. Um, or, or somebody that's a little bit unsure about the sources, etc. Yeah. So that's maybe where we sort of take a stand back. But it sounds like you operate in a, in a slightly different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I've, I've been on that side. Yeah. yeah. Um, as soon as I found out about property, wanting to step in, saved a bit of money to try to get into property. And it's easy to, to see a, a flash of a deal. Someone says, this is what you could get. This is a service accommodation at 100% occupancy. You could get this much every month, and you're thinking, Oh, that looks fantastic! Yeah, yeah. straight away, you put your money in, but you haven't understood that it's if it gets the 100% occupancy. And we know you're never sure. going to get 100% anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so they always sort of like presented that way, so it's easy for the person who's not knowledgeable yeah. to always get Always a bit of gross yield thrown in exactly, there and exactly. making exactly. it look all glitzy and glamour oh, yeah, and great yeah. paper. Yeah, and, and it, it works for some people to be honest with you. Yeah. Until later on you realise that actually what I was presented is not what I've got now. And then you then walk away and think property doesn't work, sources yeah. are bad because of that bad experience. Sure. We always recommend that if you can, because some of the people just want to invest. They don't even care what the property looks like. They yeah. want to invest because they can see the numbers work. But if you can, go through the whole process. Come and view the property. Come and see the numbers. Get to know what it is that's going on in that area, if you can. So that by the time that you actually pay the sourcer, yeah. you already know everything about that deal. Sure. There's less okay. likely chances of you ever coming back to me and saying, well, that's not what you presented yeah. because you've already seen the whole story. Sure. You've known everything that I know before I actually hand it over to you. Sure. And ha- how quickly would you say once a deal sort of foul falls on your desk for you presenting it um, to, your, to your clients list, how quickly are they, are they going? How, how quickly do these properties shift? To be honest with you, I, um, you probably heard this. A lot of sources will have certain people that they know move quicker yeah. than the others. Um, once I acquire property, whether it's through an agent or through directly to a vendor, everyone wants everything to be sold quickly. Yeah. So if I tell someone that, okay, I'm going to take that, I'll sell it on for you, they want it sold as quickly as possible. So it's only natural for me to go through to the people that will buy it quickly and then move on to everyone else afterwards. Sure. However, if the people that buy it quickly don't particularly want that, that deal, it then bypasses to the other people. However, usually... From the time of actually getting the deal, if I bypass the really quick ones, because they do it within like 24 hours, yeah. if I if I bypass them and go through the rest of the people, that deal could possibly be gone within a week. Right, sure. Yeah. Okay. So, and when you say the really quick one, are you talking about people that actually just, just look at figures, look at numbers, don't view the property, don't need anything correct. else at all? Correct. Wow. So yeah. they've got to put a lot of trust into, into you. Are you, are you. Are you viewing, physically viewing the properties yourself? Yeah. So... As I explained that you've, I've got other sources and network network people that I met, I met outside the country or outside the area that I work in, they can do that for me around the country yeah. and I can do that for them for the deals that they're looking for. However, if we're just going to talk about the ones that I work with within my area, I view the properties, I get to meet the person who's selling. Even when I'm working with agents, I usually say that I'd like to meet the person selling. Okay. Get to understand, get to know their problems, just so I make sure that in helping the person that I'm with, the investor, yeah. I'm also helping the person selling the property. Is this the best thing for them? Yeah. Before I even start to sell the deal itself. Okay. Because there's a few times where a lot of people assume that all people want in selling a property is money. Yeah. 
but a lot of times it's not about the money it's yeah. about solving the problem that they sure. have at that particular time and then even hearing stories really about somebody who wants their property to go to somebody that's going to look after it maybe exactly. or, I mean, which i guess exactly. it doesn't fit when we're buying it for buy yeah. to let but yeah. you know there is different yeah. different methods out there i guess yeah there's and, different reasons yeah and how how do you come across these properties like what, what, what are you doing to sort of find um why wouldn't they just be on right move mm -hmm. so Initially, it was a stand, it's the standard thing. If you're going to look for a property, you go on right move, you go on Zoopla, you yeah. go on Marketplace or whatever it is. That's where it started. So for me to understand what deals look like after the training that I've been to, understand what deals look like, go out and speak to estate agents, letting agents and get to understand that. But then from that, moving on to networking events. Okay. Yeah, go to networking events, get to know people. Because property is a people business, yeah. like any other business, it's a people business. And once you know one person who shows you a deal about that deal, or shows you a person about their deal, you meet that person, you meet that person, properties start popping up through these people that you meet. Okay. And a lot of these properties haven't even hit the media yet. They haven't gone to right move, they haven't yeah. gone anywhere. It's a matter of, oh, is that what you do? Do you know what? My uncle is trying to do this, or my auntie is trying to sell that property. Oh, my dad was thinking about doing this before it goes anywhere else. And then we have a conversation with the person that's trying to sell or trying to move on or trying to change that property for yeah. whatever reason, get to understand what they're looking for. And then we know in our heads that we've got investors that can help with this. Sure. So you have the investor, you have the person selling or whatever they want to do the property. Then you have us who have a win-win-win situation in that deal, so to speak. Ideally, that's the kind of deal that we go for. Okay. And you mentioned there a couple of times um, on courses that you've been on, etc. What sort of qualifications, one, do you have as a sorter? And what would you sort of say to us as, um, let's say, new, new to property? What, what qualifications should we be looking for? being a sourcer before we sort of turn over any money or trust them really with you yeah, know an asset yeah. that we're looking for that's, that's an interesting question because just a couple of weeks ago we were discussing this uh, i had another person who said they were sourcing uh, in a different area um, close to london and i just asked them about their background so, so where, where did you learn about this and he told me that well there's a couple of guys that i went to college with and they were doing it i asked them how they did it so i just started doing it I said, oh, have you been to any training, anything? It's like, I didn't even realize I was training for sourcing. I was like, oh, really? Oh, interesting. And for me, because of what I know now, that is a red alert. Yeah. Yeah. And personally, I would always recommend if you're going to work with any sourcer, get to find out what they learned, where it is that they picked up their information from. Sure. Um, I've been on training courses for property itself to start with, getting to understand what um, HMOs are, what SAs are, where the best places to invest are, and the, how the sourcing itself actually works, how to, to, to package a deal, um, how to work with the investor, how to work with the person selling, the whole procedure and making sure that you're compliant. We've gone through all those trainings. It was a, a, an intensive three-day course yeah. on that, um, which, which, which took place in, in Wolverhampton. So, I would class myself as a qualified source. Okay. I get a good understanding of how that works. And what about, um, let's say, for the business being set up um, professionally? Um, so, so your your limited company that you've obviously got there, um, because I mean, let's let's be honest. Everybody's a deal source oh, these yeah. days. So oh, yeah. we could go on Facebook now and find twenty five <laughs> property investors that are also deal sources that have never seen a property or bought a property. <laughs> Um, and that's what, where our kind of apprehension comes from as being new to property. We yeah. want to know that we can trust somebody. So what about things like um, maybe being affiliated with professional bodies or insurance or, yeah. or anything like that? What does that look like that maybe a deal source should, should have and what is it that you, you guys have got? Yeah, um, there's certain elements that you need to do legally to be a source. So not everybody can source. Oh, no, not everyone. So realistically, yeah, you can get a property and you can get an investor, put them together, get paid and walk away. Okay. Yeah, realistically you can do that, but can you do that legally? No. Okay. Yeah. So there's certain legal entities that you need to tick off. Uh, firstly, you need to be insured. Okay. So get your indemnity insurance. You need to be registered with the ICO for data protection. Yeah. You need to be registered with anti-money laundry with HMRC. You need to make sure you're registered with the, with the redress scheme. So you can either go with a property redress scheme or TPO. 
Sure, okay. which is the property owners. Mm -hmm. And then um, those are the four main ones to make sure that you've got everything ticked off, to make sure that you can actually source. What then helps even further is to be affiliated with other bodies. I'm, uh, I'm registered with the National Landlords Association. Yeah. Yeah. And that helps in understanding the rules and regulations as we go along, because that changes every other day. Yeah, and it's different with different boroughs as well. So yeah. in terms of actually doing our deals, we'll make sure that it's covered from a legal side of things. Sure. sure. Okay. We'll all advise people on how to go forward. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and then would you, would you kind of advise anybody sort of new to property, that's the kind of, like, you know, the really strong questions you should be asking a deal oh, sourcer yeah. is let me, you know, and I see that you actually on your website, you've, yeah. you've got all of the, the numbers and you've got everything where you're sort of affiliated and, and where you're accredited, yeah. et cetera, yeah. and you've got all of those numbers on there. So it does look look legit compared yeah. to some of the deals that we've seen <laughs> here kind of thrown over. What about um, specific deals then? What is it that you guys look for to be able to present to investors? Do you look for anything specific or is it sort of anything that might just fit somebody's needs or what is it that you go out there kind of looking for? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, it's more about what you as the investor are looking for. However, from experience and the amount of investors that I've spoken to, usually it's about the yield. Yeah. Um, it's, it's about the returns. So pe some people uh, view it as yield and some people look at it as return on investment. It's calculated different, but essentially it's the same principle. Sure. Um, that's what they usually look at. So when we when you do look at deals, we look at that to start with. What does that give me as an investor? If I'm looking at that and I'm gonna put my money into that deal, yep. what do I get out of it financially? Yeah. And then we then look at the location and seeing whether it's actually got any potential of growth for capital um capital appreciation yeah. and that's based on what's happening around the area sure. itself get to understand what that area is like um, get to know the location itself and what's happening and that helps in then presenting it back when someone says this is what I'm looking for I'm looking for capital appreciation I don't care about the, the cash flow yeah. I'm looking for capital appreciation then we can say yeah this is what's happening in this area and this is going to make the properties in that area go up so you're looking at at least five six years it's going to go up by around this percentage sure. as an assumption of what's happened in, in the past. Uh, we also look at uh, any potentials of growth within that area or with that particular property. Okay. Is it a property that you can extend and actually increase its worth? Is it a property that you think can tick off whether it's a student, uh, student area or is it a professional area? All sorts of those, th those sort of like information, we collect that information just in case the investor is looking for specific things. We can say, okay, yeah, that ticks that box, that ticks that box. But in many cases, people just look at the, the yield and the return. Sure. Don't really care too much about all the other information. And do you, do you think that's because potentially that they're not educated um, enough to know any better? Because another thing we see on social media is, you know, I want a, a, I want a return on investment that's plus 20 on a yeah. single let. Um, which you know, don't we all for sure? Um, but that kind, that almost that that sort of um, uh, that sort of scenario of what it is that they're looking for, and, and, and those characteristics of it seems almost that actually maybe they don't really know. And that's we do quite a lot of that actually at News Property. I get a lot of clients who come in saying, you know, I, I want to make some money. Mm. Well, ha you know, how how do you mean? Like, what is it exactly? What, what's that goal? So we can look at a strategy to be able to get there. So I guess from your point of view, then, if if an investor comes to you. It's, it's far better for you to be able to, to know exactly what it is that they're looking for, right. why they're looking for it, um, what they're looking to achieve in the future, what their strategy is, so they can kind of give you that as a blueprint and say to you, right, go and find me something yeah. that, that fix this. Then right. you can kind of get out there right. and see what you can find. Yeah, and that's exactly what it looks like. And it's interesting you mentioned that about the, the, the single let to 20% return. Yeah. Um, we go for training, usually for training in property, and we get trained on how to look for certain deals, and we, we train to look for, for a particular yield or a particular return in investment. We run through these, and you get those returns that are quite high, and you know you can do something with a standard house to increase the return. Sure. And you get that as a standard in your head. You're thinking, oh, that's what a good deal looks like. That's what a good deal looks like. And you walk away as an in, uh, as a property sourcer and you're thinking, so if that's what a good deal looks like, that's all I'm looking for. The mistake that I made at the beginning of my journey was I'm going to be looking for deals that are that percentage only. And if I find that, 
if I find that, um, I'll be fine. I'll yeah. be completely fine. Any investor would want to buy that. And then literally, um, I, I, I spoke to certain investors and returns, first of all, are not what they were looking for. They're not even interested in that. They're looking just for appreciation. Sure. I can talk about certain property up north and they'll be thinking, yeah, but that's not going to grow too much, is it? It's like, yeah, but the cash flow is this and that. Yeah, no, I'm not interested. Like, what? Yeah. And then you speak to some and the returns that they're looking for are far less than what you are thinking is a good deal. And then that's when I learned, actually, it's best that I speak to the investors first, get to understand what their standards are, what a good deal looks like to them, find out what it is that they're looking for and then go away. Sure. Because a lot of times I get, I used to get in my own way and think this, this is a fantastic deal. I can easily sell it. I come to sell it to you and then you're thinking, oh, no, because I'm thinking, I'm trying to think like you. Yeah. Whereas now it's more about, you know, forget the deals that you carry. Yeah. Let's have a chat with Dan. Dan, what are you looking for? Okay, it's that, it's that, it's that. Perfect. I'll get, I'll get back to you and come back with exactly what you're looking yeah. for. And that increases the chances of being able to sell that deal. Yeah, for sure. And I think that, I mean, that sounds like a, a really strong model in the fact because you, you see, I, I get quite a lot of deals just landing on my desk that I kind of look at and think, well, that's, that's really not a good deal. Yeah. But I guess if I change my mindset slightly on that, that it, it might be a good deal for somebody else that's potentially yeah. looking for that, but yeah. for me it wouldn't be. Exactly. Now, would you be able to find for me exactly what I'm looking for without me actually telling you? I very much doubt it. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. So I think yeah. I think that's a really good model. And, and how is it you kind of communicate? You say that you, you talk to the investors. How, how does that look? How, how does that sort of work? What, yeah, and to be honest with you, um, as much as possible, because we do a lot of networking, we yeah. spend a lot of time going up and down the country, and with information about Imani Property Investors going out on social media, people contact me, and I always try to recommend every single time. You can sign up onto the website, happy days, but then I always try to, to encourage a conversation. We'll either have the chat on the phone, or I'll come and meet up with you, we'll have a coffee, because the the only way and the best way for us to have a, a good business is for you to get to know who I am, rather than seeing a picture of me on the website or rather than seeing a video of me somewhere. Get to know who I am first. And in, in many cases, we we'll call it KLT, either know, like, and trust. That's the main thing. Before you actually try to, dip, to work anything else out, that plays a big part. If you know, like, and trust the person that you're working with, you're most likely to go with whatever deal they come up with. Sure. Rather than you come with a fantastic deal, you don't know me, you don't necessarily like me, you definitely won't trust me. Even with the best deal in the world, you're most likely not going to buy sure. that. So that's what we try to, to, to encourage. So you contact us, you've got the website, you've got the, the phone number, all that information, and then we'll come out, if possible, have a conversation, get to understand you a little bit more, get you to know me, yeah. and then we can have a chat exactly what you're looking for model that deal exactly to what you've asked for and then you're most likely going to get you something. Excellent. So talking then, do you work on a, on a commission amount or is it a fixed fee per property or how does how does the sort of payment structure look like behind these deals that you're yeah. sourcing? Um, the payment structure, is a, it, it, it's, a, it's a difficult one to explain because it's more dependent on on the deal itself, okay. yeah. It, it's not a case of, I could say, whatever deal I find, I could tell you, oh, that's gonna be 3K, or that deal is gonna be 7K. It, it's, it's more about what what's the value of the deal? What is it worth to you? Okay. So you're looking for 6% in terms of the yield, and then I come back with a deal that's actually 10% and ticks off other boxes to you. You come in your head, you're thinking 6%, well, I should pay about two grand for that one. Or I come with you with, with the 10% one, that takes all the other deals. What is it worth to you? What's the value of it? And if it really, really ticks your boxes and you really want it, we can then discuss what you think it's actually worth. There's, there's no way I could say um, my sourcing fees are always going to be 3K. It doesn't matter what it is, it's going to be 3K. I don't think it's going to be fair on the investors, it's going to be fair on me, it's going to be fair on anyone else within the team um, that's working on that particular deal. Because some deals, you could actually work for a whole three, four weeks 
trying to source that particular deal and spend a lot of money out of it. Yeah. And the returns off it, a deal that could give you up to 100K a year or whatever, and then 3K won't be sort of like enough to have a look sure. at that. So there's, there's no one figure. We've, we've sourced deals that are as low as 1.5. And some deals can go up to the 10, 15K mark. Yep. And, and, and some of them actually are higher because when you're talking commercial conversions, that's big numbers, okay. that's awesome fees. It's all dependent on what value that deal has, especially for you as an investor or how much effort we've put into the deal. Sure, okay, okay. So then advice um, from you to, let's say to me as a, as a new to property investor, would be know exactly what it is that I want. Mm -hmm. To be able to come to you, um, and then going to a to a sourcing company or a sourcing person is to do the complete due diligence on everything that, that they've got going on to yeah. ensure that they're they're kind of trustworthy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you how do you find it with um, everybody thinking that they're a, a deal sourcer out there in the market? How 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 does that sort of sit with you? Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, it, it, it does make our jobs a little bit more difficult, a little bit more difficult because you're most likely going to find someone who is not qualified, someone who is not educated in terms of deal sourcing, someone who doesn't fully understand the process. You're more likely to find them than you are to find a good deal sourcer who's got the qualifications sure. and, the, and the compliance because the rest of them, um, they will go on social media. And it's easy to find someone on social media. They'll go on social media and they'll, they'll spread all sorts of deals that they've got. And they'll flash them across on Facebook, on Instagram, and also yes. I see them all the time. And I look at it and I think, because of our experience, you can look at a deal and think, yeah, I know how you painted that, but the truth is not actually sure. out there. I can see it straight away, that's not the greatest. But if you're not fully savvy on how to actually look at a deal, you can look at it and think, that's fantastic. I'll put my money in that. Yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of those deals fall apart. And then instead of thinking that deal wasn't great, naturally you think sources are unreliable. Yeah. It, it's just a sad state of affairs. And as soon as I come to you and say, I'm a deal sourcer, I can do this for you. Because you know what exactly happened last time you dealt yeah. with a deal sourcer. We're all the same, apparently. Yeah. yeah. It's really unfortunate that's, that's the case. But... The good thing about it is once you find a good one and have a good deal, um, you're most likely going to stay with that particular deal sourcer. Yeah. That's a good thing for that deal sourcer because they've proved themselves and they're gonna and they're gonna not gonna need to market themselves too much because that investor will then become their marketer. They'll go tell someone else, sure. oh, I've dealt with that person, yeah. I've dealt with that person, and a lot of business will come because Good deal sources are in, are in a shortage. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's often difficult to, yeah. to see the wood through the trees, to exactly. be honest. I mean, I, I, there was one the other day I saw presenting this fantastic deal. It was a great deal, it was amazing. Um, and um, it was coming back with a yield of uh, 15, 20%, or whatever he's kind of put on there. And I just sort of asked a question um, of, are we talking gross or net yield? Mm. Um, and he responded with, oh, I'll, I'll come back to you. Um, it took him two days to work out whether it was gross or net yield that he was talking about on his own deal. Um, but it, it, it worries me slightly that you know there maybe are young, naive um, investors out there who get caught in the trap of, of, of seeing yeah. these deals out there yeah. and thinking you know, that, that everybody's genuine out there. So great advice then um, is to yeah, know what you're looking for, tell the sourcer what you're looking for, work with the sourcer, find a decent sourcer, mm -hmm. and, and then hopefully they can, they can get a good deal out of yeah, it. Yeah, and in most cases, the good deal sources that I've worked with and that I've um, come across, they don't shy away from giving you access to everything. Yeah, especially if you're a new investor. And there's a there's a high chance, if you work with me, that first deal says a lot. Yeah. It says a lot about you, it says a lot about me. And if that first deal goes well, it's just the tip of an iceberg of yes. anything that's gonna come later on. So if I know that I'm gonna be working with you for a long time and you're potentially gonna buy loads of my deals, we're gonna do great business, why would I hide away one small deal? True. Why would I not want you to view it? Why would I not want you and me to be completely um, open and honest about what's going on at this yeah. point? That deal goes really well. It's just the start of many yeah. other things. I've, I've, I've worked with a deal sourcer before, actually. It was the first and only one that I've worked with um, through my, my buy-to-let um, career, so to speak. 
Um, and he gave me full access to the property. I went and viewed the properties. Um, he'd given me a list, actually, of everything that was wrong with it, put a price next to it, give me a contractor who could actually sort it within the area. Yeah. And when I went to view it, he'd actually done a more comprehensive review of the property than I could have done myself. <laughs> um, so he's a great guy. He's one that I, I pass on to a lot of people. Mm. He only works a very small area where he know, his own patch. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, he can't be signed kind of countrywide. Um, and then my experience from then has been popping up on Facebook, people thinking they're a deal source and not knowing what they're talking about. Yeah. So it got kind of tarnished from there, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on so I could sort of help the new to property um, investors work out the kind of questions that we need to ask mm -hmm. to make sure that somebody is legitimate, yeah. um, set up you know, for, for success to be able to help somebody on their property journey, yeah. Yeah. Um, and maybe you know, e excel their portfolio and get them to that goal quicker than potentially they could get there on their own. Exactly. Um, I mean, really, I, I would see um, a deal sourcer, if you've got if you've got a good one, is just another member of the power team, That's somebody it. that you can rely on to do the job that maybe they do it better than you. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Muzzy, thank yeah. you so much for coming in. Um, we'll put your um, uh, website and details, etc., within the notes, so yeah. anybody watching the video can get them. Um, make sure you go below and subscribe. And of course, if you've got any messages, if you've got any questions, anything at all, pop them in the comments and uh, myself or Muzzy will be able to get back to you and help you out. But thank you everybody for listening and thanks for coming in, Muzzy. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, thanks mate. Brilliant.